Terlingua is a town located in the rugged desert landscape of southwestern Texas, near the Rio Grande and Big Bend National Park. Originally a bustling mining community in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, due to its rich cinnabar deposits, the town was abandoned when the mines closed. Living up to its name as the Texas Ghost Town, the population in 2020 was just 78. Terlingua, which sits close to the Mexican border, serves primarily as a tourist hub for visitors to the nearby national park. Popular outdoor activities for tourists include rafting and canoeing on the Rio Grande, mountain biking, camping, hiking and motorcycling. Terlingua is also known for its famous annual chili cook-off events, which attract over 10,000 attendees each year. Phyllis Eleanor Berry was born on the 16th of September 1954 in the Lone Star State. In 1975, she turned 21 years old and was living in Odessa, Texas. She resided with her best friend, Vanjie Strait, who described Phyllis as a, quote, unique individual who was widely well-liked. At the end of October, both Phyllis and Vanjie quit their jobs and decided to visit Terlingua over the weekend, alongside a friend, Terry Robert Bailey. They wished not to only partake in the cook-off festivities, but also go camping in the ghost town after the 9th annual World Championship Chili Cook-Off. On Saturday the 1st of November, the friends packed clothes and food into Phyllis's car, described as a, quote, foreign-made automobile. Phyllis's puppy, an Irish setter, also joined the trio on their trip. Upon their arrival in Terlingua, Terry went to visit friends, Vanji went to a friend's camper to catch some rest, and Phyllis went motorcycle riding in the glorious afternoon sunshine. As the sun set, an, quote, impromptu dance began, where Phyllis unexpectedly bumped into two friends, Dale Wade and John Jackson, both of Odessa. She also met a third man called Jim who was from Austin and had hitchhiked to Terlingua. John Jackson recalled that Phyllis was in, quote, good spirits, stating, quote, I saw her dancing with several fellas and she appeared to be having a good time. As midnight approached, John, Dale and Phyllis rode on Dale Wade's motorcycle to their camp, which was based approximately a quarter of a mile away from the Chili Cook-Off's headquarters. The hitchhiker, Jim, joined them on foot. John Jackson further recalled of their night by the campfire, quote, We just stood around for a few minutes, eating fritos and bean dip. The fire had just about burned down and she asked us to get more wood for the fire. I don't remember her exact words, but she said she was going to sit by the fire and wait for us to return. He concluded, quote, Jim sat with her on the cot for a minute or two and then joined us about 20 feet away where we were gathering the wood. We all walked back to the campfire a few minutes later and she was gone. John believed she may have descended the hill to rejoin revelers, or she may have gone to use the bathroom facilities. Approximately five minutes after the friends returned to camp, Terry Bailey appeared in Phyllis's car with Phyllis's Irish setter puppy. Dale Wade rode his motorcycle around the area for around an hour, looking for any sign of Phyllis. However, he returned to the camp with no news. The friends thought she must have gone down the hill and returned to partying, and together they decided to gather around the fire and sleep. They awoke on Sunday morning and they were met with an eerie silence, as Phyllis had still not returned to camp. According to John Jackson, Jim departed to hitch a ride back to Austin, and Dale Wade also went his own way back to Odessa. 
John remained in Terlingua alongside Terry Bailey and Vanjie Street, who began searching for their missing friend. Vanjie reportedly saw Phyllis between 11.30pm and 11pm on Saturday night, and it appeared to her that Phyllis was having fun. According to Vanjie, after their initial searches proved fruitless, they called loved ones in Odessa, having assumed that Phyllis had gone home. However, she had not. The Alpine Police Department were called and immediately began their investigation into the mysterious disappearance of 21-year-old Phyllis Berry. They utilised specially trained search dogs and searched the area on horseback. Her car was found abandoned in Terlingua, with her Irish setter puppy alive and well inside the vehicle, plus her personal belongings, including her purse, were left untouched. Members of the Alpine Police Department Rescue Squad, Department of Public Safety, Border Patrol and Texas Rangers started their search efforts on Tuesday the 4th of November at 5.30am. Phyllis's aunt, Ruth Matheny, said, quote, It's just not like her. If she was okay, she'd get in touch with us. I just know she would. Texas Ranger Jess Malone stated, quote, Sometime between midnight and 8am November 2nd, she disappeared. We have not been able to determine anything since then. A Border Patrol aircraft and a DPS helicopter carried out air searches, 50 searchers began, quote, probing the depths of the some 100 abandoned mine shafts in the vicinity of this ghost town. Foul play was feared in the case of Phyllis's vanishing. It was thought a possibility that Phyllis may have left Terlingua with an unidentified male on a dark coloured Honda 350 motorcycle. A witness described the unidentified individual as being in his late 20s and had blonde hair. Another witness reported seeing a woman resembling Phyllis at a tavern across the Rio Grande. However, this report was unsubstantiated. The search for Phyllis was called off on Wednesday the 5th of November when it was reported that Phyllis had contacted the police department in Odessa. However, the report was later found to be false. Phyllis's aunt Ruth said, quote, Her car was left behind and her dog was in it. So was her purse. I know she didn't go off and leave everything behind. Because of the false reports, a lot of people think she has been found. But we don't know any more today than we did four weeks ago. God, I wish I could hear good news. James Skinner, Brewster County Sheriff, believed that despite her loved one's optimism and hope of a safe return, he believed that Phyllis had passed away due to some sort of foul play. He further said, quote, This is a very hilly area with a lot of mine shafts around. Some of them are open. She might be in one of them. You could stay down there for many years before your bones are found they may never be found. Loved ones of Phyllis kept her name in the public eye in the weeks and months following her unexplained disappearance. However, despite their efforts, nothing new came to light regarding what had happened to her. Vanjie Strait, who described herself as feeling, quote, helpless, had a theory of her own, stating that Phyllis had possibly been kidnapped. However, like all other theories, there was not a single piece of evidence to direct investigators in any significant direction. It was anyone's guess as to whether she had been in an accident, had been kidnapped, murdered or otherwise. Phyllis's sister, Lucy Wiley, described her as a pretty young woman who was friendly and quite shy. Lucy said of her sister, quote, Sometimes she didn't use good judgement and she was trusting, sometimes too trusting. Lucy believed that Phyllis did not simply run away to begin life anew. She continued, quote, She really had nothing to run away from here. She had a life she liked, her own car and friends. It would have been totally out of character for her to run off. 
While discussing the possibility she had run away of her own volition, Lucy concluded, quote, We love her and we welcome her back to the family and we are forgiving of anything she might have gone through. We will abide by her wishes, whatever they may be. If she never wanted to see any of us again, it would be sad, but we would abide by her wishes. I just want to know. Texas Ranger Jesse Malone said in an article published in 2000 that there were suspects when Phyllis vanished and that remained the case as of the publication date. He elaborated, quote, The passage of time has cost us a lot of witnesses and a lot of people we wanted to talk to have died. He further commented that the case remains open. Quote, We've been involved in it every year. There's not a chilly cook-off that goes by that we don't think about it. These types of files remain open forever. A $1,000 reward was offered by the family at the time, however has since expired. At the time of her disappearance on the 1st of November 1975, Phyllis Berry was 21 years old. She is a female of Caucasian and Native American descent, standing at 5 foot 5 inches tall and weighing approximately 100 pounds at the time she vanished. She is registered as a member of the Chickasaw Nation. She has brown hair and hazel eyes. She has a flat brown mole on the lower right side of her abdomen, pierced ears, a small gap between her upper front teeth and a freckle between her thumb and right wrist. She was last seen wearing a tan and black shirt, blue jeans and knee-high granny boots laced up the front. She may also be known as Phyllis Benny or Phyllis Eccleson. She is currently classed as an endangered missing person. Her DNA, fingerprints and dental records are available for comparison and to date, Phyllis has been ruled out of being several unidentified women, including Presidio County Jane Doe, 2001 Isle of Wight County Jane Doe, 2001 Tina, 1979 Virginia Beach Jane Doe, 1976 Winchester Jane Doe, 1991 Hanover County Jane Doe, 1981 Rockingham County Jane Doe, 1980 Stafford County Jane Doe, 1998 Harris County Jane Doe, 2009 Lucas County Jane Doe, 1987 it's worth noting that all of these Jane Doe's remain unidentified. The fate of Phyllis Berry remains a mystery. Phyllis's sister Lucy stated, quote, As long as we don't have a body or remains, then there's still hope that she's still alive, and that's what I live for. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Phyllis Berry, you can contact the Texas Rangers at 432-249-0961.